So we're back in the strength shed. My second bench press session leading up to Tattooed and Strong push-pull contest that I've entered 8th of April. I needed something to focus on, as you've seen a few of the previous videos, you'll see I'm training again. It's a push-pull powerlifting competition, so bench and deadlift, that's it. Don't need to worry about too much other nasty events, so I'm enjoying it. Today we have three sets of three on bench, which are my heavy working sets. Then we've got some speed work and some assistance work to do. Liz is training as well in the background, but you don't want anyone to see that right now, do you? No. Uh, but I'm <laughs> no. sure she'll give me lots of shit, so let's get on with it and have some fun. One warm-up in. And he stopped for coffee. Coffee is part of the warm-up. Oh, is that? Yeah. I've gone back to a system of training that worked really well for me early on in my career, uh, using a lot of speed work, um, applying as much force as possible, even though they're not maximum weights. You're trying to, rather than add weight all the time, learn to move a weight faster. Works very well, um, particularly for someone like myself. It's, I'm quite an explosive athlete, so that type of style of training works really well for me. With speed work, I said this in the deadlift video the other day, you can't just treat them as lighter weights. You've really got to make sure you are trying to move every single weight uh, and rep faster than the one before. They're not necessarily going to move any faster, but you in your head have got to be trying to apply as much power as possible. Now, I really like this way of training. I'm quite far out at the moment from the comp, so we've got quite a lot of volume. There's eight sets of four. As I get closer, I'm training in like blocks of four weeks. So I have um, three weeks where I work up, I have a slight deload session. Then we drop the volume down. Um, so it, it'll be like eight sets of four for the, these three weeks. Then it's six sets of three, and then I'll go to four sets of two on my speed work. And the weights will creep up, um, and obviously the heavy work beforehand creeps up. That comes down as well. So we've got threes, twos, singles. And then hopefully by April time, I'm gonna, my goal is to bench press as close as I can to what I did last time at Tattoo and Straw. Last time I benched 500 pounds. Bench is by far my weakest lift. Um, worked hard to get it to 500 pounds. I'm gonna be 25 kilos lighter in terms of body weight. So if I can get even close to that, I'll be, I'll be pleased. A lot of people don't know how to put wrist wraps on. When you're benching, you wanna try and actually wrap up the back of your wrist. So you're not just going around there, you're trying to go up the back of your hand. It'll give you more support. Now, that's not getting bent back. I didn't think you had the flexibility to bend your wrist anyway, I'll say. I can bend my wrist, it's my fingers that don't bend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good, does it? Tell you what, it's a bit harder benching in here than it is at pro. Yeah. Pro strength, we've got a proper bench. Because this is just a loose bench, it's a lot narrower. I don't feel the securing uh, the back. Yeah. You see how sort of narrow it is here. Yeah. Sounds like I'm making excuses, but when I bench, I'm trying to retract the shoulder blades or scapula, pulling it back and down, and you don't get that stability and spring off the chest. So mm. if I can do my session today in here, it bodes well for being on a proper bench with spotters and stuff like that. Yeah. All Cerberus gear. Use code WARRIOR for 10% off. Exactly. I'm gonna ask for some new elbow sleeves soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so lazy. They, they will send me whatever I want. They're like, do you want anything? I'm, nah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm such a lazy bum. Sponsored athlete and I, I could have new things. And I just thought, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> the elbow sleeves I have on aren't even matching. I lost like one. I was like, where's the other one gone? <laughs> Such a bum. Come on, bum. <sighs> Good. can't just be serious. <laughs> I basically live in a house full of clowns, so I'm probably the most serious person in the house. You definitely are. <laughs> you are. Yeah. 
Life's too short not to laugh, isn't it? Indeed. And lift big ass weights. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I went down a size in my belt. Ooh, you back up. <laughs> Are you? I can just about fit in still. Ah, <laughs> oh, bloody December. I was doing so well. The holiday didn't help. We had a week long all inclusive holiday. That was nice. And straight into Christmas. Yeah. Basically, it was two trips to America, then our holiday, and then Christmas and New Year. I blame America. Like, don't get me wrong. I blame me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the one that put the food in my mouth. But, yeah, it's America's fault. <laughs> you make too much nice food. Yeah, and the portions are humongous. Yeah. Literally double of what I would expect to be served. It's all right. I'm focused again. I feel better. Well... I actually had a headache for a couple of days getting back into eating well. That's your sugar levels. Sugar coming out of me. <laughs> You're sweating sugar. <laughs> to be fair, some of, the, probably worse. some of the stuff you ate over Christmas, Lasse, outrageous. I mean, I've, I've not been good either, but you. <laughs> that chocolate bar. Well, it was a Christmas present. It's like a kilo. Uh, that was ridiculous, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't buy me chocolate for Christmas for crying out, crying out loud, anyone. No. Because <laughs> I'll eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Lizzie. Good. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. I Good. actually felt like I'm warming up into it. It's getting easier each step. Good. That's what you want. And now we drop the weight down. Yeah. Hopefully it'll feel really easy. You happy with the speed of that? Speed was okay. I felt like I slightly came off my line. Um, probably did. The weights have shifted that way. Okay. Was there any issue with the, the setup that I'm using? Yeah. But um, I was pretty happy with the speed. The goal is to get even quicker. Oh, easy. <laughs> it's a lot easier than that weight did warming up. Yes, going up to it now, coming down to yeah. it's better. Yeah. yeah. Much, much easier. Yeah. Do you think at any point you'll do a full power lift and meet with squat? If I can rehab my knee properly, then yes. I think I will. Um, it's improving. Like I said, I'm starting to be able to get a bit more power into my deadlifts. When I trained for the Royal Albert Hall, like, other than Liz, no one knows how much agony I was in. Mm. It was... It wasn't good, was No, it? it was amazing to go and experience it, but just training through pain is not fun. But I am seeing some progress. Now, it all stems from my Achilles. So that weakness that's in the ankle and the calf has then made the, the knee have to work harder. So I'm trying to do a lot of work now, strengthening up the ankle. Three times a week I'm doing rehab work for the knee and the ankle and calf, Achilles, etc. And I kind of got screwed over a bit with my rehab initially because I was getting physio and stuff, then lockdown happened and then it was just all cancelled. And because at the time I was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to go to Worlds again. I just thought, well, I'll sod it. Mm. But I want to keep lifting as long as I can. I might not be competing to be the world's strongest man anymore, but I still want to be a decent athlete, lift, have fun, enjoy training, chase the kids. So. I'm trying to make sure I'm looking after my body and getting as strong and fit and healthy as possible. Um, and yeah, if I feel good and I'm not in, not in pain, that's the biggest, it sounds like a broken record, but when you're in pain, it sucks. No one wants to lift in pain. If it doesn't hurt, and there's a difference between pain of, you know, muscular 
fatigue and <clears throat> pain of competing compared to physical pain from an injury. It's like you've ever had toothache. It's just awful. And that's like consistently in that area. It starts making it pretty miserable. So bench press obviously involves a lot of um, tricep power, delts, uh, chest, tricep, fucking pressing my chest. Um, so the pecs, the triceps, the delts, also the back muscles. So you've got to be making sure you're working all those major muscle groups hard. I like to do uh, variations of incline dumbbell press, get a little bit more range of motion. When I do dumbbells, I tend to go with a neutral grip, keeps the shoulders in a safer position. It takes a little bit of getting used to if you've never done it before, but you'll find the carryover is good. You can start to really engage more of your lap power. Uh, a lot of rowing type movements, incline dumbbell rows, barbell rows, and there's always crossover. Obviously, these will help other lifts such as your deadlift, but a strong back is really important in terms of bench pressing because it's the opposing muscle groups. And then tricep strength. I like um, overhead, easy bar, um, tricep extensions, skull crushers if your elbows can handle them, various different press down movements, dips, all those type of movements are gonna carry over well into your press moves, getting that lockout stronger on your bench. If you wanna get strong, it's really important at certain movements, so you wanna get good at bench pressing, it's really important that you bench press. You know, you wanna be, become really specialist in those type of movements. If your technique gets better, you can actually get better and lift more without actually getting stronger. So focusing on if you want to be a strong man, you've got a log lift coming up in a comp, train log lifting. If you've got a bench press competition coming up, train your bench press and train it regularly so you're getting lots and lots of practice on that movement. You know, today, by the time I've finished my working sets, I'll have done 11 working sets on bench press. It's a lot of volume, but it's a lot of chances to try and make little tweaks and improve your technique and get better and better. And the other thing I'll say is on your warm up sets, treat them exactly like your working sets. So use those as a real good chance to improve technique, get everything firing, and make sure those motor patterns and movement patterns are becoming better all the time. So on the dumbbell stuff at the moment, I'm not going that heavy. I have like an assistance bench press day on my day four, where I'll go heavier on dumbbells. Um, I'm just trying to get blood through the muscle group. So I'm picking weights that are moderate. Um, with plenty in the tank. I'm just doing sets of eight, focusing on the movement. Uh, a little bit tired now from the amount of benching that I've done. So now it's just going through the motions, getting some blood into the muscles, and I go heavier on my dumbbell work on my, my day four. Right now, this left arm is weak as crap from where I tore it in the summer. Mm. So I'm just like hammer curls. I start with a weaker arm and just match it with a stronger arm. It's almost too easy right-handed, but <laughs> it's still... Do you want it to be balanced? Yeah. Okay, week two of bench done. I feel pretty good about today. Uh, everything moved how I wanted it to, maybe even a little bit better than I was expecting. So that's a, a positive sign. Lots of improving to do still, but just enjoying the process. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And there's a link in the description to, uh, below. If you're interested in coaching, make sure you check it out, and we'll speak to you guys soon. Take it easy. While you're here, guys, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so you don't miss any of my awesome strength content.